Okay, so now that I am graduating from York, I thought I would take a minute to just make a little video um, about a few of the things that people think about when they think about if they should go to York or not. I know a lot of people are returning to campus after our absence, and some people are just thinking, should they choose York over a different school? So I just thought I'd go over a few things, um, mostly like safety, the strikes, schoolwork, campus life, that sort of thing. Uh, I know this video is not going to cover it all, but it might give you a bit of an idea um, to help start your own research. So uh, safety is one of the biggest things that people think about when they are thinking about York. If the thing is, it's a safe school. A really key thing to remember is that York is basically the only landmark up north of that part of Toronto. So when something happens near campus, they will frequently say it happened at York, but not a lot of stuff has happened at York. Well, that's a lot of stuff's happened at York, but it's like not as much as they somehow seem to think. I find that the York security patrols campus a lot, um, and I've seen the police on campus like two times. I'm not the person to speak about whether police should be on campus or not. I know YFS ha has been like fighting to get police completely removed from campus. I am not the person to talk about that. Um, but I've only seen them on campus a couple times. And one was after like an attack in the village that was really bad. Um, speaking of the village, that's where the crime happens. So um, on the one end of campus, there is a small area called the village and it is residential houses that a lot of students who live at York, who go to York live in. There are parties there, things like that, and that tends to be where the crime happens in the residential area. Um, the thing is, don't walk alone at night. Um, just speaking as a woman, I'm not wandering campus alone at night. But I have never felt unsafe. I don't want to people to think that I'm saying I have felt unsafe because I haven't. Um, and York knows its reputation, so they have a go safe service, which are students that'll walk with you. Security sometimes walks with you. If you're really lucky, you get to ride in the golf cart. Um, and they also have this, uh, I don't remember the name of it, but there is it, there's an app, a York U safety app. Download that. You can summon the go safe people from there. There's safety phones. Um, they will pick you up, I think at Very Hall, and drive you to the where you live in the village, like they have a shuttle service. So there's a lot of things in place to make the school safer um, because they're aware that they've had a reputation. I don't believe it's completely deserved. I think a lot of the crimes that happen have been relationship type crimes, domestic type crimes. I don't know what I can say on YouTube. Um, but it's it's not just for the most part random. Um, there are issues that need to be dealt with. Um, but York is doing a pretty good job as a school keeping everybody safe. So another really big thing that people think about is student life because York is known as a commuter school. And yes, it is a commuter school, so people do tend to like take off as soon as class ends. I would say if you can afford it, live for at least a year on campus because that gives you like a more well-rounded experience. There's a lot of events, there's a lot of um, things you can go to, there's, there's always something happening. So you can join events, join clubs, go to these things, and you'll be able to make friends. The thing that a lot of people get caught up in is that a commuter school is a lot more like being an adult. Um, you don't really have friends of convenience. You're not making best buddies with everybody that's in your 250 person plus lectures. When you get into your upper year classes and the classes are smaller, yeah, you're gonna meet some people and that's gonna be great but you can go to events you can find people with similar interests that's what you have to do when you're an adult technically this is just preparing you for real life there are things to do on campus though there's 
always an event, there's always something happening. So you're going to meet people if you go to the events and if you put in the effort to meet people, which is what you have to do when you're not in school. So it's kind of just like that. And I know that that's not what a lot of people want to hear because you want to say, I made friends with everybody in my dorm room or anything. I spoke to one person on the floor of my apartment one time when we rode the elevator together and then realized we lived next door to each other. We went, oh, hey. And then I went in my apartment and she went in hers and we never spoke again. Um, but every morning, every like 20 minutes, I would hear her alarm go off and I'd be like, mm, that's the girl whose alarm goes off every 20 minutes. I never learned her name. Um, so you're not necessarily gonna make best friends with everybody in your building and that's okay that's how real life is we just have to remember that you have to put in the effort to make friends so housing at York um, there are the dorms there's a bunch of them I don't really know too much about the dorms I know that some people hate on winters I know in general the air conditioning and the heating is bad but it's like that in the apartments too um, so there are three no yeah, there's three types of apartments, four types of apartments, um, three of which are owned by York, and then there's the quad, which is its own thing and really cool. Um, I didn't live in the quad because I'm cheap. I lived in a Cinnaboyne. It's known for having cockroaches. I only saw two cockroaches the entire time that I lived there, and they were fumigating the rest of the school at that time, so, I mean, like, was that great? No. Do I do I live in the city and just expect it? Kinda, yeah. Like they fumigated the apartments twice a year, so you didn't really see that many bugs in the apartments. Um, and they were very strict about other kinds of bugs. Uh, but I did learn about myself that I was willing to like just straight up punch a cockroach. So that was a fun, like fun thing I learned about me. Because um, everyone thinks I'm like super girly, and I'm like, no. Apparently, I was just like, oh, with my bare hand, um, kill a cockroach. So. Yeah, that was fun. Um, but for the other places to live, so there's the Assiniboine Apartments, which um, smell, and then there's Atkinson, which are, oh, Assiniboine are all furnished. Atkinson and Osgood, I believe, are not furnished. Um, I really wanted to live in Osgood with the law students because I assumed it would be quiet, but, you know, I didn't get to live there. Um, they are nicer. Assiniboine is not as nice as Osgood and Atkinson. Um, I believe the other two aren't carpeted, you furnish it yourself, like it would have been nice. Although, I moved out in about two hours when the school let me um, end my lease early because of the, the world state, so not having to move furniture was really nice um, because I moved out in a panic along with a lot of other students. So the apartments themselves are decent, like for what you're paying. I mean, I paid $900 a month for a studio in Toronto. That's not, that's not bad. <laughs> um, it wasn't huge, but it was all mine and I live with my parents right now. So I definitely enjoyed a place that was all mine, but the dorms are actually pretty decent. The furniture in every single apartment that is furnished and the dorms is all entirely the same and it is awful. Um, but I have seen videos from a lot of different schools because I watch a lot of move-in dorm videos because I'm just, I don't know, sad about the world. And it is all the same furniture. So it is very, very typical school furniture that you're going to get in any of these places. I think the apartments did like meetups for people. Um, again, I never went because I didn't particularly care to meet everybody in my building. That's nothing against them, but I was focused on getting a four-year degree done in three years, so I didn't have much of a social life. Um, and now I talk to a camera alone in my room. So I'm really coming up in the world on talking to people. So just a quick one for food. There's a lot of food places on campus. Um, York Lane has a few restaurants in it and like a little cafe. There's a few um, cafeteria style restaurants all over campus. Um, there's a full cafeteria in Curtis. I would just randomly find places that had food. So I was never like at a loss if I didn't want to cook because my apartment did have a full kitchen. Um, I was never at a loss for finding food. But this is my biggest tip. 
uh, ever for school. And that is, in your backpack, you're going to want to carry an empty Tupperware dish and an empty Ziploc. Reusable preferably, but you do you. Because you're going to find events that have food. And if you do not eat the food, the food will go to waste. So you should be shameless and steal the food. You just put a little bit in your container and then you can take it with you. Um, and then you have more meals out of that event. And like, yeah, are you the person putting food in a Tupperware? You are. Um, but a lot of the time the staff working at those events just don't want you to starve. So they're going to be like, here, take more food. And people are kind of like, a Ziploc or a Tupperware? And they're weirdly impressed that you thought to do that. So academically, York has a bit of a reputation. If you can hold a fork, you can go to York. Um, very clever other schools for being able to rhyme York and fork. You're definitely just achieving far more than we are. Um, that being said, I don't know how difficult all the courses are. I know mine was a very essay-based writing communications course and I like writing and I like essays so for me we fell into a groove we cuz me and the program we fell into a groove with each other um, but no but like I fell into a groove in the program and it was it was good for me um, I have heard from the computer science and the engineering students on reddit that it is not an easy school and they're trying their hardest and I respect them and I say nothing bad against the computer science and the engineering students because they are working very hard but they have led me to believe that the school is not easy because they are struggling a lot so I think that the York is easy academically reputation is just a bit of a rumor because our name rhymes with fork um, but I mean they're getting good internships and stuff out of it so there is working out for them but it's a bit of a challenge so I think if you choose a program that interests you, it's going to be a little not easier, but your attention is going to be there, so it's going to work out a little more for you than something that you completely hate. Um, I know that there was, I did fail, well, well, I didn't fail a class, I dropped out as soon as I got my first grade and realized it was not for me um, when I took one course and it just, it was not for me. So you will find classes you like and you will find classes that are not for you. It, it's not that it's easy, it's just find something you like there. Okay, this is the topic that most people have watched this video for. And that's strikes. York has some strikes. I was worried about the strikes too, but here's the thing that I learned in researching this video. U of T and York have had the same amount of strikes. The issue with York strikes is not the frequency with which they've happened, although admittedly over the last few years, this is when all the strikes have happened. The issue with the York strikes is that they tend to go on forever. The 2018 strike went on for 143 days. They go on longer than they need to. You can see that U of T goes for month-long strikes, where the York strikes do go on longer, but if you don't count that administrative strike of 1978, uh, which lasted for 14 days but did not affect classes in any way, it's the exact same amount of strikes. So don't base your decision based on how many strikes York has, because the other schools have them too. And it's not just universities where strikes happen. In 2017, all of the colleges went on strike, and they were on strike for like, five weeks or something, um, there's no post-secondary where strikes do not happen. That's it for this video. Um, I hope it helped in some way. I don't know if it did. I tried. Um, let me know if you have any questions down in the comment. If there's anything you want me to expand on. I feel like I didn't talk about strikes for a very long time and people are going to be about that. Um, but let me know if there's anything else you want to see or hear about or any tips and tricks for school and I will see you all next time. Bye!